Hey class, I hope you're all enjoying your weekend. I just wanted to make you a quick video to give you a hand since this is our first swatch book assignment. Um, I know that getting started can be really tough, so I want to give you as much support as you need for this. Uh, so this week, you're going to be looking at the swatches from your Just Received swatch book, and you're going to be determining if they are a staple or a filament fiber. So what you want to remember is what is a fiber? Those are the hair-like individual units of the textile. So all textiles are made from fibers. Those fibers are twisted or assembled together to make yarns. And then those yarns are constructed by knitting or weaving or bonding into a textile. So when, what we're looking for is each individual unit and we're determining whether it is a short one staple or a long continuous one filament. Generally speaking, a staple is going to be at most about three inches, about that big-ish, versus a filament is going to be long and continuous. At times, so for example, this is alpaca, uh, some of these little fibers here, which you probably can't see, but trust me, they're there. Uh, some of these are up to, let's say, maybe like four or five inches, and some animal fibers like this can go up to about seven inches, but you're really not going to see anything longer than that in any kind of a staple fiber. It's very soft. So the reason why um, we have to think about if something is a staple or a filament is we want to think about how those yarns are going to be twisted. If let's say we have all filament yarns, they're all going to be lined up. They're all going to be the same length when we're looking at them. And we don't necessarily have to put in twists. We can twist, but we don't necessarily have to because they're all nice and lined up and we can use this to knit or to weave and they're going to stay nice and easy to work with in a nice and long continuous strand. Now, if I try to do the same thing, and instead I had all of these staple fibers, I can't really put these through. I don't really have anything to be able to weave or to knit, right? So for that reason, I have to have twist. So if I twist them together, then I can make a long strand and this I will be able to weave into a textile product. Okay, so let's look at some examples of real textile products so that you can see what this might look like in your closet. Here is a cotton t-shirt and a pair of jeans. It can be helpful for you to grab a t-shirt and a pair of jeans also, just so you have something that you are going to know is a um, staple because they're both gonna be made out of cotton. So big hint, remember that all of the natural fibers are going to be staple except for silk, just naturally. The manufactured, those will be more challenging because they can be filaments, but they can also be cut down to be staples. So let's take a look at the t-shirt. One thing I like to do a little bit of a cheat clue is I will kind of look across the top like this and in good lighting, you'll see that there is like kind of like a brush looking softness and little, almost like fuzziness across the top. And that fuzziness is actually those staple fibers sticking out. So you'll see them just like that right there. Then if you put the shirt down and take out your pit glass, open the pit glass make sure that your pit glass stands up nicely on its own and you want the measuring tool down here that's going to be very important later and then we have this part here you're going to set it on top and you'll see all of those tiny little fibers in there sticking out so then we know this here this is staple you'll find the same thing with a pair of jeans you'll see kind of these fuzzy little strands you almost feel like you could pull them out. And then again, if you look with the pit glass, you'll see those fibers again. Okay, put this aside. When you are looking at your swatches, 
I want to encourage you to pull the yarns out of the textiles because sometimes we need to pull the yarn out, for example, like this, and we need to untwist it and pull these plies out so that we can really see all of the individual fibers in there. And that's gonna give us a lot of insight into that textile. These are your swatches, so you want to explore them. It's not important to keep them nice and neat. It's, uh, well, it's important to keep them in order, but it is not important to keep them in pristine condition because we want to be pulling them and maybe even burning them if you feel comfortable later on, um, but really just using them to understand how they're made, why it's important, and what that process was. What, what do I need to know about this textile? also helpful to have just a regular pin sewing pin nearby in case you need help pulling out a yarn or getting in there or opening the the yarn up to see the twist so you want to take your pick glass and um, first just look at the the swatch as a whole look in there this one here is a crinkled cotton gauze so I already know it's going to be a sable because it's cotton, but even when I look in the pit glass, I can see those individual fibers kind of, you know, sprouting up everywhere. And if I pull out a yarn and give it a little bit of an untwist, I can again see those smaller fibers there. In contrast, if I look at this little organza right here, and this is a silk organza, I don't see anything. This is super, super smooth across the top, very smooth. There's just no fiber sticking out there, not a one. If I look with my pit glass like so, same thing. Everything just looks very clean and uniform and lined up. And I can pull some of these yarns out here. And even when I'm looking at the yarns, and I hope this is something you can see they're all exactly that same uniform length, very much reminiscent of these right here. Same thing when you look under the pit glass, they're all lines up all those fibers. So I know that this one's going to be a filament. These are all the same length, there's no fuzziness, and they were all long continuous fibers that were laid together or possibly just a tiny bit of twist. So I hope that helped for um, this week's assignment and gave you some clarity. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And um, if you have any questions, you know how to reach me.